So we saw some video applications. We saw that, that conferencing application that had a lot of data. Uh, we saw a few games. There's also some other content that's interesting. I'll show this uh, trackometer app. So this is a really nice app that uh, turns your phone into a pedometer. So there were questions before about does GPS work? And the answer is yes. You can see our signal here is good. It's six. And if I hit start, and I was actually to start walking a real distance, you could see the GPS uh, going forward. The map is actually transparent in the background here. It doesn't show up quite as well on the projector as it does on the actual phone. But I can actually see the map, and I can open up the menu and actually open up the map. So something interesting out here. We're really interested in making sure that the apps behave well within the device. So the idea being that that if there's a menu button on the phone, I should be able to use it just like an app written in Dalvik would or any other language would. So here, if I hit this native menu button, this, this soft key, I do get a menu that was commanded by the Flash developer. And I can open up a map. And then someone also asked about multi-touch. So you can see here, I can zoom in. I can zoom out as well and look at this map. And it will fill in with the network live as we go over Wi-Fi right now. Um, and so this app lets me do GPS, interact with Google Maps, and I can now see the routes as I walk around and see how much have I walked, what distance have I walked, how well that works. So this is a um, this is a, a pretty nice experience that's currently under development. Stop it, I can reset it. And we're seeing developers build these really clean experiences, taking advantage of capabilities like GPS, like multi-touch, like network and location, and uh, building some generally fun things with air. Uh, I think I'll show you one more uh, application, which is Away 3D has been working on their framework, and they built a nice demonstration that works uh, in air as well. So this is a demonstration of their 3D model. They built it under a nice plane. And they're showing it rotating around the screen. And so this is a, another nice use of how is it that I can bring interesting technology outside of the browser with air. Yes? Uh, one thing we I just looked at the Adobe Directory app. We also have a screen sharing app called Connect. I'll skip past that so I can show you some more non-Adobe things. Um, one good example here is this app called uh, Flash in the Can. So there's a conference this week, um, or Flash in the City, um, that's happening here. And someone built an air application to help people find basic information about the conference, schedule, workshops, core information of this nature. And so this is all built using Air 2.5 uh, on Android. And I can flip through a variety of features and pieces of content here. Now. There's also other applications we can look at. Uh, there's a really nice YouTube experience. So someone built this DeskTube app where I can actually search through YouTube content and play popular videos. And uh, like with Flash Player, you can still see and have operating uh, video content in air as well. Again, the, the two runtimes are very similar. They share a code base. We separate them only for security reasons and to have additional functionality available to developers specific to applications or specific to the browser where necessary. So there's a there's a, a movie playing and video, and as you'd expect, I can watch this. I can flip between videos. I can search for other videos as well. So I can also look at other fun applications. There's a there's a, not surprisingly games. There were some questions before about how do I bring games into applications outside the browser on Android. And so we are seeing developers who have those experiences and skills tuning their games and making them work on Android as well. So this is a Meteor Storm game. And uh, this genre is uh, something that you may have seen before if you uh, play a couple games. But I can shoot asteroids that are coming down, have a pretty fun, good experience. It's definitely loud here. I hope you can hear it too. <laughs> And uh, I'm not really good at it, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> that said, there's, you, you, you do see a fair number of games. As, of course, that's one of the big interest points. And there's a lot of game content in the market. So that's where developers are seeing money. That's one of the genres they're focusing on. So here's a pinball style game called Pogs. I can shoot this ball, and it's going to play around. And people are having fun with physics. They're generally uh, having some uh, interesting drafts of the games that they're looking to put on the market as soon as we actually oops, as soon as we actually finish air, and then the pinball gets eaten, it's kind of sad. So, so don't lose. Um, outside of games, there's other things we're seeing as well. There was actually a, an app posted on Engadget recently. This is a, called X-Wing. So uh, I thought I might demo that briefly. So I can say start, and this is a, it gives you the fun sound effects, and you get the targeting computer, and that number is actually roughly how far we are away from the San Jose building for Adobe right now. So if we started moving, we'd get closer. Unfortunately, we're stationary. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, sure. Because I thought I wondered. 